I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust. And I'm going to be discussing today with the chairman of the Federal Trust, John Stevens, the present turbulence of British politics, particularly as far as the position of the prime minister is concerned. We'll be asking whether he can survive his present difficulties, and if he does or doesn't, what the implications of that may be for the future of the Conservative Party, and particularly for its um, policy towards the European Union to the implementation of Brexit. Um, John, uh, over the past few days, um, there have been a number of articles suggesting that um, John Boris Johnson's time is run. Max Hastings said something like that. Daniel Finkelstein said it. And uh, a prominent um, uh, donor to the Conservative Party, John Armitage, is quoted today as saying that he thinks that uh, Johnson's position has passed the point of no return. Um, do you agree with that? Um, uh, and if you don't, what are, what are the factors that you think may keep Johnson in place? I don't agree with it. I think Johnson's position is much stronger than it appears. There's clearly uh, a lot of uh, build up of feeling against him, but I think it lacks the coherence to uh, bring him down. And he certainly doesn't want to go voluntarily. And getting a prime minister out of office who doesn't want to go is particularly one with an 80 seat majority uh, is a very tall order. Um, there are a number of um, uh, fronts of attack against him, as it were. There's the personal, there's the, the ethical, um, and there's um, the people who think we're getting the wrong sort of Brexit. Um, would you care to tease them out and uh, tell us a bit more about the various wings um, within the Conservative Party and within the Conservative press uh, which are attacking him? Well, I think clearly that the basis of this is, a, is one of his personal character and uh, his, his moral position. Um, but that never worried people before. I mean, a lot of people in the Conservative Party knew that Johnson was an extremely uh, controversial and uh, challenging appointment as uh, their leader, but believed that this was necessary in order to achieve Brexit. And the achievement of Brexit and now the maintenance of Brexit uh, is the preeminent policy of the Conservative Party, because if Brexit were to fail, that would be the end of conservatism in Britain. So the stakes in that sense are very high. I think what is new in the current situation is the emergence of the fact that because Johnson can, can no longer be guaranteed to attract uh, electoral support to maintain Brexit because of his personal failings, that those who have wanted Brexit, a particular type of Brexit have started to rationalise removing him in terms of ensuring that they get their, their way to have the sort of Brexit which they want, which is, um, to simplify, Singapore on Thames. It is a, that, that part of the uh, support for Brexit that wanted a radical uh, deregulation uh, a radical break from European social democratic consensus, as they saw it, in favour of uh, very much a red in tooth and claw uh, capitalist approach. And that is what is now coming to the fore. And the people who are uh, coming out who are Brexiteers um, against Johnson are precisely those who feel that he is not giving them the sort of Brexit that they wanted. And of course, Before the Brexit go, go, go. project was, was always a, 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 a split one. There were, there were the English nationalist uh, support for Brexit, which focused on the interests and the values of, of the Red Wall, the north of England, against the perceived elitism and, and, uh, uh, and lack of interest in, in uh, the, the whole country of the southeast of England and of London. And there are those who, who um, actually represented very much the, the, that elitism of the, of the southeast of, uh, of, of England and London. Um, but from a, a hardline capitalist um, uh, position. And those, that coalition was fundamentally unstable. And what is happening now is that Johnson is wrapping himself in the support of uh, the English nationalists against the, and is perceived to be against the interests of the Singapore on Thames uh, 
brigade. Yes, but uh, it was one of the uh, the insights of um, Dominic Cummings, whose role in this uh, attack on the prime minister is perhaps worth speculating about further, um, that there wasn't ever going to be a specific kind of Brexit advocated during the referendum campaign, because he knew that that will put off some set of potential supporters. Um, but there was a, another element to this um, uh, obscurity, to this uh, ambiguity, which was that, as you say, there were always a, a, a number of important supporters of Brexit who had this uh, idea of being able to install the minimalist state as a result of, um, uh, of Brexit. And, um, but up to now, to do him credit, Johnson has been too politically canny to fall into that, um, into that trap because he uh, seemed to have been aware, as John Major said at the time, that um, that's a, a prospectus that can never be sold to the British electorate. Um, and Johnson has avoided this um, um, Singapore on Thames rhetoric. Do, do you think now, as a result of his weakness, he's going to be forced to go down that path? Uh, is that why Bri Jacob Rees-Mogg has been uh, appointed to be the Minister for Brexit Opportunities? That must be a cushy number, by the way, if you just spend your time <laughs> <laughs> wondering about Brexit opportunities. But uh, does his uh, appointment um, signify a move in that direction towards Singapore on Thames? Not really. I think it, it's a fig leaf in order to keep that wing happy. Uh, the, the Singapore on Thames wing of the party happy. But uh, I don't think, uh, I mean, Rees Mogg is, is very fond of declaring whether people are lightweight or not. I think he is quite lightweight himself in this situation. Um, the, the, Johnson knows uh, that fundamentally a full Singapore on Thames agenda is undeliverable in Britain. Uh, and certainly um, that his the whole basis of the electoral victory in 2019 was to create this coalition with English nationalism, and that that is the sh the surest basis. He will he also concludes that the Singapore on Thames people um, will have nowhere else to go electorally. Uh, that hedge fund Britain is not going to vote for the Labour Party in any form. Um, and there is no plausible political voice for them. So in a sense, he, he is safe in going with the English nationalist interpretation of Brexit rather than, or broadly with the English nationalist interpretation of Brexit rather than a Singapore on Thames one. But he will continue, and, and his chancellor will and others will, uh, use some of the rhetoric of that, of pretending that they are still going to be in favour of, of tax cuts ultimately, um, that they want to reduce regulation, that they want to uh, streamline the state and all of that. But the reality is that uh, the future of Brexit is now tied to the success of the levelling up agenda um, and his capacity to hold of the north of England. And that will be done with a combination of uh, a fairly high level of public expenditure still, and the use of the, the cultural tropes associated with Brexit, which will be English nationalist ones, essentially. Um, now, in, whether that is capable of working in the long run is quite a different question. Do you think that um, it would make any difference to Conservative policy on Brexit over the coming years if Johnson were replaced, or would it be exactly the same um, uh, correlation of forces for anybody who replaced him? Well, it would be the same essential problem of balancing uh, the two sides of the coalition that created Brexit in conservatism. Uh, but Johnson's strength is that he is far and away the most plausible uh, banner carrier for the English nationalist wing. No one else uh, who is in contention has a comparable capacity to appeal to that constituency. And that is why I think he's going to survive. Uh, and I don't think that ultimately the, the, the rival Singapore on Thames uh, constituency um, have uh, enough uh, capacity to remove him because they, they, as I said earlier, they have nowhere else to go. And he can throw enough to them in terms of promises of, of, of on taxation and on um, 
not going overboard on expenditure um in 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 building in in, in having a lot essentially the large state solution that is required for the for the north of england um in order to keep keep them happy now it it, it is true that he, he could, further scandals could could uh, undermine him but whoever if, if he were to be replaced uh i think it is it is less uh, likely to be someone who is capable of holding this coalition together. Uh, I think he will. Uh, they will tr still try to do essentially the same policies as he is pursuing, um, but they don't seem. I, I think it's difficult to imagine someone being more effective than he has been in attracting the English nationalist vote. Past twenty years in the Conservative Party have shown the power of uh, ruthless and. Uh, uh, energized, determined minorities to drive the Conservative Party in an ever more radical Eurosceptic direction. Um, may not this be such a time in which um, the ERG don't necessarily agree they've got nowhere else to go, that if there are further scandals, um, they may think that there is somebody who is less capable of, of resisting um, their extremist pressure than Johnson. Um, and this combined with doubts about his personal electability um, may over the next few weeks or months, particularly if the elections are bad in May, uh, create a, a fundamental crisis of the regime, uh, which um, Johnson won't have an answer to. Well, it's, it's possible to have a very strong um, Brexit agenda while playing to the, to the English national uh, interest rather than the Singapore on Thames interest. Uh, and uh, here, I, you know, you, it would be much tougher on on Northern Ireland, on, on the protocol, on on immigration, um, much tougher perhaps on on uh, moving uh, away from EU regulations with a, a, a protectionist effect. Um, I think there are a range of things uh, that can be done that will um, that, that will play to that agenda. I mean, the, the the what is the dispute is whether there should be a, a radically smaller state and much lower taxation and, uh, and all the rest, and, and to do with financial regulation and things. But where Johnson has a weakness is that the, the essence of that nationalist agenda is very much um, tied up with the, the maintenance of the union. And this is true, obviously, of the Northern Ireland Protocol. It's also true with Scotland. And Johnson's um, real uh, Achilles heel is in playing the champion of the English nationalist or the cause is that is this confusion between English nationalism and 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 British nationalism uh, and the maintenance of the union that the, the Singapore on Thames support for Brexit was very narrowly English nationalist and that he didn't really care about the union and there's quite a large number of, of the supporters of this very radical approach who who regard who were truly English nationalists in the sense that their, their interests were financial and global. And uh, the idea that keeping Scotland is absolutely critical um, is not one. The, the Chancellor is, is, uh, has been wide, in, in part of the criticism of him as a potential uh, rival to Johnson has been that he doesn't care about the union. He, he has no feel for it. He's, a, he, he's very much a, a global person, not a British person in that sense. And uh, other people who are, uh, are of that um, low, uh, low regulation, minimal state approach um, are narrowly English in that sense. They, they don't, they're not interested in, in, the, in, the, in the, the whole um, uh, paraphernalia and uh, historic um, resonance of the British nationalist case. And Bro Johnson's real problem is that in Scotland, he is absolutely toxic. And in fact, the, the, the fact that the Scottish Conservative Party has always unanimously come out against him in favour of his departure is potentially a real problem because come any election in Scotland, it's very difficult to see um, what will happen to the Scottish Conservative Party in those circumstances if he is still leader. So that, I think, is where the, the fault line is for Johnson. It's, it, it's not that he is pursuing an English nationalist agenda rather than a Singapore on Thames agenda. It is that within the English nationalist agenda, there is this British nationalist agenda with which he's not able to really be very credible. 
And, and that's why the, the real issues for him will be the Northern Ireland Protocol and how to deal with Scotland. It was very interesting to see M. Paisley Jr. Uh, expressing his doubts about the commitment of the Conservative government to the Union and uh, his fears um, that um, the interests of Northern Ireland, as he conceives of them, uh, were going to be subordinated to, to those of, of London. If um, Johnson is um, expelled or, or ceases to be prime minister um, on, on the basis that there's a further scandal that he's proved to have been proved to have lied to the House of Commons in a particularly fragrant, flagrant way. Um, do you think there's any chance that that would rub off on the credibility of Brexit or, or is the Conservative Party um, so and the Labour Party as well so far committed to Brexit now that uh, nothing can make any difference? Well, the problem is that the Labour Party has concluded that in order to defeat um, Johnson and defeat the Conservatives, um, if Johnson goes, um, it must fight on the same terrain, that they are fighting over the soul of the north of England. So they are contesting on uh, the battle on what is essentially English nationalist, British nationalist ground. Um, and that has led them to conclude that they can't talk about reversing Brexit. They have to, uh, to satisfy those who voted for Brexit. So rather than uh, making the case that Brexit is actually catastrophic for the leveling, any leveling, plausible leveling up agenda and catastrophic, therefore, the interests of, of the north of England, which they're trying to appeal to, um, they've decided to essentially try to compete on the same ground as the Conservatives. And to a lesser degree, that is true, I think, even of the Liberal Democrats. So uh, the, although it is clear that one would have imagined any objective observer would say that if Johnson has been revealed as a total liar about um, bring a bottle parties and having cake at his birthday um, during the pandemic, um, he was also lying even more dramatically about about our, our whole geostrategic interest in, in Europe. Um, but that link, um, though obvious, is not being made politically, um, either by the Labour, certainly not by the Labour Party or even by the Liberal Democrats. My own view is that, that Johnson probably won't survive. I, I think that there's a, an array of forces against him, which as you rightly say, uh, is disparate and um, sometimes contradictory. But I've been very struck by the way in which um, uh, traditionally supportive media uh, have been either explicitly or implicitly um, calling for his replacement. Um, Daniel Finkelstein today talks about the way in which um, uh, uh, once a political charisma has been lost, it, it can never be recovered. Um, and that does seem to me that uh, that it does seem to me that Johnson is at a, a tipping point from which um, perhaps he, he he can't recover. Uh, thank you very much for your analysis. Uh, unless you want finally to disagree with me again, well, I, I I just say that I think that the the media, um, you know, Rupert Murdoch um, and others, um, they have. Their view of Brexit was very much one which was much closer to the Singapore on Thames vision than the English nationalist or, or North of England one. Um, and so what you were getting, it is, there's no question that the real power of um, the, the, the Singapore on Thames vision has been its position in, in the media, uh, in, in the, uh, the Telegraph and in the, in the Times and in the, in the Daily Mail. Um, and so that is why you're getting a disproportionate level of opposition to, to Johnson coming from that quarter. But I don't think it necessarily uh, uh, plays through to the weakness of his position in the constituency which he's endeavouring to appeal to, which is in the north of England and, and, and among the English stroke British nationalist um, voters who supported Brexit. Um, and... and it, it, we will see. I mean, clearly, he is in a very weak and, and, and vulnerable position at the moment. But underlying his position is that he is still uh, the best guarantor there is for Brexit. 
in the sense that he is the best person to appeal to the constituency which the Conservative Party believes it, its survival depends upon. Um, if he goes, therefore, the potential chaos inside the Conservative Party, and therefore by extension, the the damage done to the Brexit cause and its coherence of the Brexit cause will be enormous. Well, um, I, I think we've had an expert talk in the sense that uh, we've left our viewers and listeners confused, but at a higher level of knowledge. So thanks very much for, for bringing that about, John. Those who live longest will know most. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. It's one of a series of videos about Europe, about Brexit, and about the future of the European Union uh, from the Federal Trust. Uh, we hope that you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then you'll have notifications of future videos, which I hope you'll enjoy uh, as much as perhaps you enjoyed this one.